Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so thrilled today to be joined by Noma Dumezweni, who is the star of The Undoing. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of your research for the role, because I know that you talked to a lot of lawyers. And was it specifically defense lawyers that you were talking with, or was it a really broad range? And, and from within those conversations, what were some of the commonalities and the threads that you then pulled into the character of Haley from them? Hello, Mara. Beautifully pronounced my name. I thank you very much. First and foremost, we have to honour that. Um, uh, I did speak to a broad, ra broad range of lawyers. Um, of course, right now, did I remember the name that I was going to, the, the names of the amazing people that I spoke about? But there were two in particular. Um, one who was now in private practice had been a defence, had been a prosecutor and a defence lawyer, a gentleman. Um, I'll find that out for you a bit later on. Oh my gosh, I feel as if I've got to Google that now. But he was fantastic. Just even going to his office and just seeing and listening to his work because he'd been involved in government and defending or prosecuting different areas in the last um, uh, 20 years. And quite a young guy as well, but someone very um, centered in how they held themselves. And also what I loved about him was the way he spoke about the theatricality of um, a courtroom and how just sometimes you do just push up a little bit of that and you hide that a little bit, but you concentrate on the, um, uh, the some lines or words you want to push out in your um, statements where you want it, the jury to receive it directly or how, what was great for me in terms of Haley and listen to what he was saying. It's going, great, no one can use the theatrical energy to bring Haley in this room and just go, this is where we're pointing. And actually not worry about the TV cameras. Yes, be a bit quieter than Noma would normally be, because Haley's doing this now, and we're, we're, we're making a film. And then the other woman I, I do remember her name is um, uh, Carol Mason, who is the head of John Jay. Oh, I'm feeling bad. I didn't do my homework because it's been over nearly two years, darling. Um, but because she was a black woman and um, not dealing in criminal defence, if I get that correctly, but just to see her in her environment and listen to how she had, how her world had grown. So I did need to, I personally went, I need to meet a black woman. And there was a black woman via another friend, a young student um, actor who just happened to know this woman socially via another friend. You can get, please. And then just to have an afternoon talking to her and her history. And um, she's extraordinary because you go, you fought for that place. And both of these individuals, again, there was a comfort in their space of what they did and how they did it, which I really, really valued. And there was a pride in what they did. And you've talked about how you came straight from being on stage for three years for Harry Potter. And then it was a week after you wrapped that, that you were shooting <laughs> The Undoing. And so I was really interested in, in kind of like the recalibration of your muscles as an actor, because you've come from a space where you're really projecting to the very furthest yes. corner of a huge yes. space to suddenly having the intimacy of a camera that might be in a really extreme close-up and, and how Susanna Beer really helped you in finding some of the stillness yeah. and, and kind of like carving it in. So what did that look like with that recalibration for you and terrifying figuring how you acted? Terrifying because my body muscle memory was in another space. Yes, I've done TV before in different places in a small space, but there was something about the undoing, getting that part. Um, was I've never been in this situation with the people who are making it. But the, the closest to that was the previous, I would say the first series, I got to have a lovely run uh, in, in terms of a story arc for the character, was Black Earth Rising by Hugo Blick, which I just love his work. Oh, didn't you? I bet about all his work, phenomenal. The Honorable Woman, sure. Shadow Lines, and it was like, poor. I got to work with this man. And that was um, after making, what we did the first year of Harry Potter in London. So it was the wonderful seven month um, uh, heaven space of creativity, other creativity before going on to Broadway to do Harry Potter. And that was extraordinary. And two more different people you cannot have um, creating TV and film. So coming out of uh, Broadway, Harry Potter, and literally a week later, as you say, um, I am just talking because my resonance is down there and I'm just acting. And you can, I remember Susanna saying, we need to get the three years of theatre out of you. We just need to get... I was like, nope, quieter, quieter. 
but I still feel as if I'm really loud. I'm like, like I'm going to give you my best. Yeah, not bad. You can go quiet. I'm like, what the? Oh, what I mean about terrifying, because it was a space of going, I've known this thing really well. I know it, 360 degrees. Theatre I know really well. And then there's this platform that this gig is just about to give me another platform because of the people who are involved in it. But the actor always comes in and goes, the actor, me, goes, oh, shit, it's the first day of school again. Here we go. And it's a really new thing. And when you feel, and I did feel that I was doing the wrong thing. I did feel I was getting it wrong majorly because I was like, I, I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was going to be. I was, this is not the route I had to do. Literally, just that basic thing going, get off line. You've just got to be ready with your lines. I'm still in theatre mode going, yeah, yeah, I know them roughly. Um, so we'll just do the rehearsal and I'll consolidate them in um, the makeup chair. And then Susanna said, no, I needed to be ready for the other actors. Oh, shit. Sorry about that. That space when you realize you could be letting down people I remember my head starting to kind of fry away going they've got the wrong person they've got the wrong, absolutely wrong person finally got it a combination of Susanna going stiller quieter stiller stiller and going okay because I'm not doing that for the stage it's all that all those cliches you hear about from theater to film I was like, yeah, ticking all the cliches. I'm just having to uh, recalibrate indeed in a, in a major way. But what was interesting for me was a space where my vulnerability kicked in because I went, I'm not good at this. I don't know this. And what, why I'm saying this, because that job, this job with Susanna, the undoing, was absolutely the place that I needed to be if I want to be where I want to be. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And I also do remember apologizing to Danny, the sound guy, towards the end of the run, saying, Danny, remember a few weeks at the beginning where I just was loud? I am sorry about that. And he just laughed because another friend taught me, speak to the distance of the person you're speaking to, because the mic is doing all the work for you. I know it sounds so simple, but it was... Of course, if I'm speaking here, then I'm just going to go like this because you, know, you can hear me. But if I'm talking to the other side of the room, of course, I'm going to lift it. But theatre, I have used to, I'm, I was used to one room. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like that idea of that stillness even transcends to you and the quietness transcends to the relationship and rapport that she has with her clients. And we see that through a lot of the dynamic in the scenes with Hugh and with, with Nicole, yeah. because as a as a professional, she has to create a space where she has a relationship and a rapport with her clients um, and get them to open up and tell her very personal things, yeah. but has to not give too much of herself over. And so I feel Absolutely. like some of the things that you do that are so great in that performance are just kind of like creating that quietness and creating that space where the other person then wants to fill it. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about how within those scenes, you very specifically were thinking about the minutiae of how would her body language be? How would she be holding herself? How is she speaking really gently? And what's the pacing of that for her to lure them into telling her what she wants to hear? That's good. I, I, the, the things that are popping up as you're saying that there is a combination of two things. There's a combination of the script, first and foremost. David E. Kelly's writing, fantastic. Especially for me and Haley. that's why Haley became a meme in some fantastic ways. Um, and it's also the com a combination of Susanna going stiller, stiller. And that, what I realized for me was stillness is confidence. Stillness and comfort is confidence, and that's what Haley has in her job. She can afford to let the space sit to see how her clients will react and to see if she'll make the choice to help them or not. And I loved understanding that sense finally. Um, and there's that thing of just you have to hold yourself back in that space, but also we've also got to understand. I was very aware this was a very expensive practice. And that thing, rich, entitled people think they can get away with things. She's been here before. This is not her first rodeo, as the Americans say, if you know what I mean. Um, and so uh, calibra understanding what those, not feelings, but what those realities are in terms of imagination. And then the set does it for you. And then the costume does it for you. Now, my thing with movement and physicality is 
I don't like to plan what my body's going to do because like now, oh, my hand's just popped up. I don't know that my hand was going to do that, but there's a sense of me going, let's see what happens if I shift because that's what the body does. And within that, the director can go, actually, no, do you want to, I remember Hugo Blick years ago saying, uh, keep it simple. I think I keep getting the same note from directors, actually. Keep it simple, Noma. It's a learning curve. Um, but he was like, uh, I remember him saying, "There's you can have maybe one or two movements in a scene. That'd be really because the, the, the camera does do it for you. So that's part of Susanna going, still, still, still. And we talk and it's all here and it's all eyes and the camera will pick up. She knows what she wants to shoot. She knows the angles she wants to shoot. And that's an interesting place of letting go of that. So I suppose it's a very long way of saying between everybody, costume, the writing, the director, the other actors I'm working with. That's where my joy comes in because in that moment we've built up, built up, great, this is what she's going to look like. Now this is what the set is. Okay, now what does it feel like? That's what for me acting is. What does it feel like? So I don't like to plan my movements before I know what the feeling of the thing is going to be. Then I can hold on to movements. Mm-hmm. I also wanted to ask you about working with Jerome Butler, who is your dialogue coach, and the yeah. way that it goes beyond not just thinking about the specifics and the sounds of the dialect, but how it goes into exactly everything that you were just saying about the way in which Haley speaks, the pacing, yeah. because that's all part of what you're figuring out within the dialect work as well. And so how does he help you beyond just like the sounds of this is what the vowels are going to be in the way that she speaks, the but in really figuring Jerome out Butler. all of the measures? Yeah, he, and he, he, he weirdly in a brilliant way, ended up being kind of an acting coach through the voice as well. Um, Just that simplicity of, um, well, this is who, first and foremost, who is she? Where where do we want her to come from? And where in this world? So we, I'm not going to tell you now, but we had a story of, yes, she's from here, but we'll say, yes, she absolutely went to Colombia. There's a history there of law. There's a history of um, activists going through that route. and I'm talking as a black woman. I always have to remember this. And what was interesting, Jerome Butler is an African American man. I don't know any more about his history and the and his lineage in that sense. But what I found that really, really helpful that this person goes right. If we were to go uh, in a more is the word colloquial sense, she might say it like this. But actually, this job. This is how she would say it. And also my stresses as a British person, I'm much more lyrical and Shakespearean and theatre and stuff like that. Um, Because we do, I, so I'm just thinking now, because even just by saying a specific word, I feel that I'm doing the acting theatre thing. Um, But actually I'm also doing the English, British thing as well. But he's going, no, because she's not from, the islands coming to America. She's not from um, the South coming to New York. She's, what is her history here? And that was gorgeous. And just that thing of physically understanding what your tongue is doing in a space. Um, and I would feel it as I did it. And I would absolutely feel it if I'd got the sound wrong because literally it became this technical. And I hate, I hate technical, but you need to learn the technique to let it go. And I was finding it like it just in my mouth. And what do you mean my tongue's got to be bit the back of my throat? Oh, and, my throat. and then he starts speaking like this and it just seems a bit simpler. And you start, oh, okay, okay, something's coming through. Um, I needed Jerome Butler like mad. I don't think Haley would have come through if I hadn't had Jerome on that yeah. space. And I would, for all those um, who are working with people with different voices, it's interesting listening to Daniel Kaluuya absolutely bigging up um, his dialect coach for Judas and the Black Messiah because what he did was extraordinary in that uh, piece, that part. That whole film was fantastic by Shaka King. But I love that he says, and with the dialect coach, well, yes, I went to do um, opera lessons because he's a narrator. You do what you need for the job. And those people who are already extraordinary in what they do are there to help you therefore collaborate. Mm-hmm. And when we look at the source material for The Undoing with the book, it's very much through the perspective of Grace. Yeah, and then what Susanna yeah. does that's so brilliant with the show is she plays with us. You know, there's this like great cat and mouse game where she keeps yeah. changing the perspective and where we're seeing the story from. And particularly in all of the scenes that you're in, we're really in the midst of that game in its throes. And does that have any impact in any of what you're doing in looking at 
how she wants to bring the audience in, the route that she wants to take us in and the perspective that she's trying to carry with a lot of her choices? In terms of Susanna's work, no, because once mm-hmm. she was, what she knows, she knows which mm-hmm. shot she's yeah. going to just give me those different angles and I will feed it in. So even for me, just watching the thing as we all watched it, just seeing those moments when Nicole's eyes, she went back, so film, she, she went so, not back, she went so in with Nicole's eyes, so filmic. And those moments are like, this is brilliant because she is a filmmaker. She is this extraordinary filmmaker. And that's what was l- lovely a- a- about that, uh, the way that she made the story that I ended up seeing as we all saw, saw together. Um, in terms of me being on the set, it's like, all right, so we're just going to do it from this angle. We're going to do it from that angle. And I'm still like, I have no idea what the camera's doing. I mean, is it there? 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 I'm now starting to be better at asking. As And, and it's lovely. You, you find people who are watching going, and the people say, oh, they're, co- they're coming in here. I went, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Because there is that thing about doing the big wide shot. You don't have to give it as much as you do when it comes in here and learning how to use one's eyes and be still and keep them open longer than try not to blink. Um, All those things are part of history of learning to do with film. So in terms of how she was making the story for her sensibility and her eye, no, I was trusting the script Mm -hmm. because what she does is the visual, therefore the storytelling within it. But the script is a thing I know I can see. So it was always, it was a surprise. To watch it was a lovely surprise. And you were talking right at the beginning as well about, you know, some of the conversations with lawyers and the theatrical element of being in the courtroom and and the transcendence of that. And when you watch it, it's really true because there's moments where your character, where Hayley has to think about who is she directing this information towards? Who is she telling? You know, and even down to the cast who are playing the jury, even though they're not speaking, they're such scene partners because it's like, okay, I know that that guy's not engaged. That's the person that I need to try and convince still. Um, And so I was really interested in just how you navigate navigated feeling out the room in the way that Haley would and thinking about where you were playing different pieces of information to. I love that because what I love you acknowledging is the jury and those supporting actors. Um, they were amazing. They were truly, truly amazing to work with. And we're there across five days and yes, you got, we actors get shoved off into another space and the supporting actors get shoved off into another space and you kind of, and then we're there. And then when the camera's off, you kind of have a quick conversation, but exactly because they're acting as well. They're taking the information, they're, they're receiving the information from me and taking it for how they feel. They know what they've got to do in the story. And exactly like it says, someone's eyes will be closed there or someone's eyes. I remember this particular woman, she's like, it was like, great. She's like, she didn't quite like where Haley was going and stuff like that. You may not have seen it, but they became my anchor, especially for those for those scenes. Yes, we have the person um, on the stand, but actually they're, they're not the important person for me. The important thing is to how do these people played by the supporting actors are responding to this storytelling. And of course, there'll be the direction from Susanna saying, okay, maybe we can push that here a bit more. Maybe we can push that there a bit more, um, less than that, or add that more. Um, And you give that in different um, goes every time you have a a new version. That was a huge learning curve for me as well. Just give something fresh in each one as you can. But when you have people, and I I realize I, my big thing is, or big, it's such a simple thing no one does this on their own no one does this on their own um but we get the shiny stuff actors get the shiny stuff but you're right I look at the other person who's in that jury who's another actor they're there and they are invested in this story that's all I can do is they're as invested as Hugh as Nicole is in the story we're all there making the show because we want to make sure that David and Susanna are getting what they want to see and hear. I think that's such an important acknowledgement. And I love how that transcends even to the way that you talk about your mentor, Tony, um, who's been working with you in your career for over 25 years. Mara, you've done your homework. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) But I loved, I loved when I heard you talk about him and you said our career in terms of like, you know, he's part of your career and everyone thinks about acting as this very individual thing, but you're completely right. It is such a group success and there's so many other people. And so I just, I I wanted to talk a little bit about the way in which for you, your career is such a collaborative element. 
Thank you. And thank you for acknowledging Tony. That's brilliant. God bless you. Because he's 84, nearly 85. We Zoom about twice a week um, and from his little place in West London. And I've just introduced him to Pose. And it was great dialogue history talking about that, the ballroom scene. Oh, my God, what's that about? This is extraordinary. The trans actors, it's a different time. Love him. He's a great conversationist and he just loves art. But we do talk about, and I, I do say to him, because also maybe I'm aware that time is passing on his side. We've known each other for 25 years. And I realize that, especially since I'm doing, I'm more and more acknowledging Tony's presence in my life because he was the one who gave me confidence to become an actor. Um, and I tried to audition, didn't get through for two years in drama school, but he also said, well, I can help you. Um, you don't have to go back to drama school. Let's see how things go. And we've just had this relationship of Tony I've got this audition what do you think about this can I send you what do you think about this da, 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 da. he's my sounding board for that and there is a part of me that is goes there will be a point like my mother there will be a point that life is beginnings and endings and I'm very, I'm at that stage as well in my life that I'm feeling I'm having this in interesting beginning in terms of how the world sees me from Harry Potter and from the undoing and they are markers in my life and I will hopefully be a mentor to other people in, in, in that sense. But that's why I love theatre. That's why I love, I've done a one person show in my life, once in my life. And thank God for the director, he's still one of my best friends. I was 25, do you know what I mean? It was a very long time ago. There was the um, stage manager, the stage manager and I, and um, the sound guy traveled to all the different places. I will never do it again. <laughs> I mean, never say never, but, I was still the only one on stage playing 20 parts. And I just went this, I need to know the energy because you're receiving it as an audience. And I, I know the markers of what I have to tell in the storytelling. I'm saying this because Mara, I added on 10 minutes to that show. And I learned very specifically that something was going wrong and it wasn't quite as fizzy as it was. And I asked Lisa, please come and have a look at it. And she went, oh my God, you're indulging in every moment. I was like, oh. Okay, I'll work that backwards. And I could feel it when I did it again, I could feel what she meant. And what that for me was what another actor would give. Um, just that little simplicity of that. And then because it was me going, I'm not quite trusting that the audience are receiving what they should be receiving. So therefore I'm gonna tell them everything. It's that awful thing like, you cry, I will cry, make you feel. That's the worst kind of acting because actually, I will make you cry by trying to hold back my tears so intensely because that's what humans do. We just don't want to break. And therefore, you know you feel it when the chin is going on wobbling and stuff like that. But you can see someone's fighting. It's like fighting to live when someone's got a death scene, fighting to not be vulnerable. That's when empathy comes in. So it's a long way around again. Um, I'm thinking about Harry Potter and how we've got that show made. There's no one person. You can start with JK going, she created this world. But what we did on stage was one of the most extraordinary um, col collaborative experiences I have ever witnessed in the two years beforehand of workshops and how they work. And then you come in and do a TV with Hugh and Nicole. And they're so brilliant. They're so brilliant. They're such good humans. That was such a pleasure because I've kind of gone, well, obviously they're up there, do you know what I mean? They're going to have a little, they're just going to do their thing, so I'll just work on my thing. And the best actors go, all right, what do you think about this? Oh, great, okay, okay, maybe I'll try that. Not, not to tell you what they're going to be doing, but let's talk about what we are creating. And they were very open to that. And I remember Nicole talking about when she, I realised this before Big Little Lies came out season two. Um, she's talking about how she was... Um, learning lines for like six hours a day because she had a court scene coming up and she just wanted to be effortless and in my head I was like what six hours a day that's why you're Nicole Kidman oh my god but of course you make that that's the work that you do and then you play and this is what this job is for me it's about play and who do I get to play with and on The Undoing, I got to play with the most extraordinary people. But by the same um, way, there will be people who are extraordinary that you'll never know of that I've got to play with on the stage. And I love that feeling. I love it. 
Yeah. But with that idea of, you know, Nicole practicing lines for six hours a day, the amount of work that goes into any moment on screen is so much yeah. more than what we get to see. Absolutely. And when you look at Haley as a character, you know, I, I loved how you, you said at one point, like, oh yeah, I bet she has a wine closet at home and she goes home <laughs> with a glass of red wine. And as an audience member, I see that. I'm like, of course yeah. she drinks red wine. Yeah. Of course, you know, that is yeah. her choice because there's so many details that you finessed into her yeah. beyond what what we see and because she's a character that in the show we only see in a professional setting it's Absolutely. so important and so what were those details and those facets of her world and her life that were the most important for you to be able to figure out to bring all of that onto the screen that's lovely because again always start with a script but you want to feel the 360 degrees so another version of that is the costume talking about the costume why she chooses that costume and all of a sudden I realized with scenes choices I'm going ah wardrobe Haley's wardrobe is effing expensive it's glorious and it's tailored it's sharp lines there's a choice in what we wear as I can see I'm a very comfy kind of war lines whereas Haley is that um so that's interesting for me and then my imagination was what does she do that's the thing that I just need to understand what does she do when she goes home when she's not in this world because I believe that she gives everything to this world um and maybe there are choices there in this world that negate a deeply personal life and intimacy. This is just positing. This was just a, an idea in my head because, as you say, we only see her from the professional angle. And then I thought, yes, there is love. There is intimacy there, but it's not as we understand it. It's a familial thing. I, I had this story for myself that actually one of her joys is that there is an elder in her life, maybe like my Tony, um, who is wearing away and um, time is passing. That's her place to be loving. Mm -hmm. And I like to think she does some kind of good men mentorship for the young people coming through her company. I'd love, I love that idea. But there's, I think there's a space she keeps totally, there, there's a, she's the kind of person when I watch, I go, she keeps those lives totally separate. They don't merge together. And so that's for me what was interesting watching episode six for the first time with everybody, because we only got episodes one to five. And then we watched episode six live with everybody. I'm like, oh my God. Because in the for me, the course is she's having an absolute meltdown and a tantrum. And it so surprised me because we did different versions of that. And that's the uh, the choice that Susanna made in sharing. And I went, oh, I quite love that. I felt uncomfortable watching it at first because you've seen Haley going this boom, 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 boom. Very linear, I'm in control. And what was lovely was the mess of being out of control, being not in charge because this one has effed it up. Um, people ask me, did I know before the hammer turned up? I think, I don't believe she did. I don't believe she did, but she had a sense he's, he's not pure. But that was the moment she got scared. She got afeared. And right now there are choices here that are going to be consequences. And I always, I, and I always feel that that moment, if you were going to do a future version of Haley's story, that was the humbling of Haley, because she had to get, she's good, but she got played. So what does that make, make you happen? So I love the idea of the wine. I love the idea of a luxurious home. I love the idea of music. I love the idea of, there's a group of girlfriends she goes away with once a year. Do you know what I mean? They're all high powered individuals in their own way. Those little things add a sense of who this person is. You don't have to know that, as you say, but it, it just makes it a little bit, because all characters are not, with the, with the, characters are not empty characters are not empty yeah but the writing I helps <laughs> I think that's why there's such a richness in in watching her on screen and I really loved watching your performance there's a reason that it resonated so much and thank you so much Noma <gasps> Mara pleasure to meet you thank you take care love